Um, this is the TI-83 calculator. Uh, developed in 1996, this has every mathematical function or curriculum could ask for. It even has programming capabilities for advanced problem solving. Or as uh, most students know it, it can play Space Invaders. <laughs> um, now, over the past 15 years, these tools, uh, graphing calculators like this, have become standard in the classroom. Referenced routinely in textbooks and necessary to solve many problems in math, science, and business. Unfortunately, since they were introduced, these devices have held a pretty constant price of around $120, and while newer models have been introduced, they have only increased in value. Um, now, this is a problem, uh, because now that these calculators have become so standard, students are expected to possess an item many of them simply cannot afford. Uh, schools will try to get around this problem by providing class sets, but in a time when many schools are struggling for the bare necessities, spending thousands of dollars just to buy some calculators simply isn't an option. Now, uh, I always knew that calculators were expensive. I've lost more than my fair share, but uh, I never knew what a big problem it was until about a year ago. I was looking through donorschoose.org for the first time, and I uh, noticed that it's a website for teacher donation requests, and I noticed there were over 200 schools looking for help with calculators. Um, I started looking through, and it was an eye-opening experience. I never realized what an effect a lack of calculators could have in a classroom. And I really can't tell these stories as well as the classes themselves, so I'm going to read to you the testimonials that first motivated me in the hopes that maybe they'll have a similar effect on you. Um, this is from a chemistry class in Indiana. With over 50% of our students now on reduced lunch, many families just do not have the money to afford calculators. As a result, many students simply do not turn in assignments that require math because they do not have calculators to help them do it. This is from a math teacher in the Bronx. Graphing calculator technology is new to most of the ninth graders in our class. The lesson's focus is sometimes lost by having to wait for students to share calculators. Currently, we have 15 working graphing calculators. There are 32 students in each class. You can see how this presents a problem. And uh, then there's this final one from a different math class in Indiana, and I think it highlights the biggest issue. I'm a math teacher in an urban school who has 80% of her students on a reduced lunch program. Students at my schools who use graphing calculators on the state graduation exam scored 31% higher than students who were not given the opportunity. This project could mean that many more students will have the tools needed to help them graduate. Now, I checked up on the claim made in that last uh, paragraph, and it's true. Um, multiple studies have proven a very strong link between graphing calculators and higher grades, um, better comprehension in math and science, and most significantly, higher scores on standardized tests like the ACT and SAT. What this means is that students who have access to graphing calculators do better on the exams that determine whether or not they get into college. And I think this is very significant. Um, this really hit home for me when I saw the first request from a school in my hometown of Nashville. They were looking for $500 to just buy three calculators. And that's when I first realized how we could solve this problem. Uh, you see, at this time, I actually had a TI-83 of my own lying on my desk. It was a spare. Um, I had one too many. And uh, I figured if this school was willing to ask for $100 for a new calculator, I bet they would take mine for free. Um, it's a lot easier to raise three calculators than it is to raise $500. So uh, I just asked around. I um, got two other friends. They were both done with math. And just like that, I had filled a $500 donation request, and I hadn't spent a dime. I figured I might be onto something. So I brought it up at my student organization, Society of Physics Students, and um, we agreed there were probably hundreds, maybe even thousands of students on campus who had old graphing calculators that uh, they were totally done with. So with that in mind, uh, we started our first donation drive. Calculator, oh sorry, cookies for calculators. Um, this was a lot of fun. Uh, any organization can do it. The way it works is we baked a whole bunch of cookies and we gave them out for free. And in return, sometimes uh, students would give us their $100 graphing calculators. And um, this might seem like an unfair trade. I like to think of it as a mutual gift. But um, it works surprisingly well. Uh, 
really, students have no connection to their calculators once they're done with their math courses. They have no life value. They have little resale value. But once students figured out that we could get rid of these effective paperweights and um, donate them to charity, they were more than happy to help out. Oh, sorry. Um, using the proceeds from this event and subsequent donations, we were able to raise over 30 graphing and 15 scientific calculators. This uh, fully completed a donation request from a local high school and saved them over $4,000 that they can now send, um, spend on other areas of equal need. Um, I have a... Oh, hey. Now, um, I've uh, targeted three other schools in the Knox County area that need the calculator donations, and it's my belief if we make this an annual program, we can actually fully supply every school in the Knox County within 10 years with good graphing and scientific calculators. Um, so great, you know? Uh, locally, <laughs> problem solved. Uh, no, unfortunately, that's not the way it works. Um, this is a really big problem. Uh, apparently, nobody else knows about it, and it affects schools all across the country, and national problems require national solutions. Um, the friends and I who worked in this project agreed there was only one step as sort of a duty. Um, we created a nonprofit organization, and that is how Calculators to Classrooms was born. That's been my work for the past semester. Um, and, and we have our mission to ensure that every high school has a quality supply of graphing and scientific calculators. Um, now, uh, this is an ambitious goal. Uh, when I say every high school, I mean it. Uh, we're even considering going to some schools in South Sudan and other countries. Um, and so the first uh, task in trying to solve a problem of this magnitude is to find the root problem. You know, um, why is it that we live in a society where hundreds of students on every campus have such valuable items with no idea what, uh, how much their community needs them? Uh, why is the Amazon Kindle dropped in price from $400 to $80 in five years and we still don't have a graphing calculator under $100? And um, I think this is because a lack of respect. People really don't respect calculators. Um, the most common criticism I get from my program is from people who are saying, you know, well, maybe if students would just start learning how to do it by hand instead of relying on their calculators, they wouldn't have this problem. And I'm sorry, but this is an archaic view of thinking. Um, calculators came out, they have changed curriculums, and at this point in time, you cannot have a functional math and science program in a school if you don't have calculators. They are basically as essential as pencils and paper. Um, unfortunately, whereas there's multiple programs out there to assist uh, lower income students with pencils and paper and textbooks and calculators and even iPads, students are left to fend for themselves when it comes to calculators. It's viewed as an optional tool. And so what happens is that this creates a sort of uh, educational imbalance where students who can afford calculators are getting a competitive edge in math and science, leaving these uh, lower income students in the dust. And um, this is really the effort, this is really what drives me. Um, people ask me what kind of project this is, and while it is an educational program, um, I really view it as a social justice project. Um, Goeth once said my favorite quote about science. He said that science belongs to the whole world and before it vanishes the barriers of nationality. And this is so true. Uh, go into your local college's graduate program for physics and chemistry and you'll see people representing more countries than you've ever seen in your life. Um, but now I think it's time to destroy a new barrier, one based on wealth, so that we can have a country or a world where every student has an equal chance of falling in love with math and science and pursuing it for a career. I'm not just saying this out of self-interest. Um, the fact is, the uh, careers in STEM, uh, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, such as biology or chemical engineering or math or physics, these consistently fill out the top 10 highest earning degrees upon graduation from college and they're the most secure job fields. Um, the more that we try to give assistance to low-income students in these fields, the higher the chance that students might graduate in these careers which can pull them out of former poverty, which is a mission that I think we all share, and a mission that we can begin to achieve if we start to view calculators not as supplemental tools, but as objects with significant social impact. 
Thank you very much.